But um, Hebrew awareness understands that the lost ten tribes shall be found amongst Western nations. That is what our movement believes in. That is what we work for, to propagate this knowledge, to spread it to as many people as possible know about it, and to impart this information to whomsoever is prepared to receive it, because it is important, it is very important, it is uh, vital that this uh, information be spread, and we spread it, and we do what we can, and we do it with our, under our own impetus, through our own efforts. And uh, like everything else, it costs money, there are expenses involved, it's not easy, we have to survive whilst we are in continue to do this, to research more and more and to spread uh, this knowledge. So all those who uh, think, as we do, agree with us, or even think there's some value in what we are doing, they're asked if they can to assist us. I mean, apart from that, apart from that, we have some very inform important information to tell you. Things of great interest, and we advise you to listen to us. Lost and tribes are amongst Western nations. That is, uh, the lost and tribes are to be found amongst the peoples of Finland, of Sweden, of Denmark, of Norway, of the Netherlands, of Belgium, of Luxembourg, of France, Switzerland, England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, Northern Ireland, also in North America, uh, USA and Canada, Australia, New Zealand and South Africa and other areas. Lost and Tribes amongst those areas, are in those places. We don't say that everyone there belongs to Lost and Tribes, but that is where the Lost and Tribes are to be found. That is where they will be found. That is where they will give expression to their what they are, and they have already done so. In an historical sense, in the future they will continue to do so. That is where the future developments, the future revelations of biblical prophecy are going to take place from those areas. So we advise you to listen to us, to take uh, cognizance of what we are telling you, and to check it out, check it out, because you'll see that it does check out. And this is what we have. And this is what we believe in, and uh, this is the truth. And we identify, we identify the tribe of Dan, the tribe of Dan with the people in Denmark, also uh, contingents of Dan were sort of be found in other areas, including in Ireland and the British Isles. Even though the British Isles on the whole, they are the domain of the tribes of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. But uh, with that in mind, keep in mi that in mind when we go through this present talk concerning the tribe of Dan and the future revelation of prophecy in our world. Now we have a principle we Jewish thought, incidentally, we ourselves are Jewish, we believe in the Jewish religion, practice the Jewish religion, and do what we can to learn what we have to. And a lot of our sources are derived from Judaism, or through learning the Bible in the light of Jewish commentaries, rabbinical commentaries. And uh, once you're understanding, they are, are reliable and enlightening. And the present talk is also based on a, uh, an article in Hebrew by a rabbi, Rabbi Baruch Eflati. We never don't know him, as far as we know, we never met him. But he writes articles of some depth on the internet. And uh, the sources that he gave in, on, in, in an article concerning Dan, the tribe of Dan, and the Messianic Revelation, is what we used for what we're about to tell you. So, we have the principle in the end times that there will come a Messiah. Will come a Messiah descended from David. David will give rise from a Messiah. The son of David will become, will be the Messiah. Messiah, son of David. And he will help save all of the Israelite tribes. To unite all of the Israelite tribes together and he will save the world, ultimately save the world. And that's what the Messiah sent of David will do. And even in Judaism, it is a, an obligation to believe in his coming. Every Jew, according to the Articles of Faith, the 13 Articles of Faith of Maimonides, should believe in the Messiah and the coming of the Messiah. 
And even though he delays his coming, we will wait for him every day that he comes. That he should come. So we have the Messiah. And we have the, the tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel, sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the four fathers. Jacob was renamed Israel. Jacob gave rise to 12 sons. He begat 12 sons to his before father, who is of our tribes. They were together in the land of Israel. They came out of Egypt. They went down to Egypt and they came out of Egypt under Moses. They conquered the land of Canaan under Joshua. They divided the land up amongst them. And then came King Saul. After King Saul came King David. After King David came King Solomon. After King Solomon came Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. In the time of Solomon, actually in the time of the son of Solomon, Rehoboam, in his time, ten of the northern kingdom tribes uh, seceded. They set up their own kingdom, the kingdom of Israel in the north. And this kingdom was conquered about uh, 200 years, round figures, uh, 200 years, say, after the secession, after the division, the northern kingdom was conquered by the Assyrians and all of its, senses, all of its inhabitants were taken away. All of its cities and settlements were destroyed, as, did, as confirmed by archaeological findings, and all of its inhabitants were taken away. And they were taken away, and they were taken away to areas in the north and also overseas. And by various paths, after the passing of another several centuries, they all eventually all moved, or in stages, they all moved to the west, and they converged in northwest Europe, and uh, western areas of Europe, and that is where they are to be found, that is where their ancestors' descendants are to be found today, as well as offshoots from the peoples who come out of them such as North America, Australia, New Zealand, and so on. And they don't know who they are. They lost consciousness, they lost awareness of their ancestry, they lost awareness of who they are. So it was prophesied that that would be the case. It was prophesied that they would forget who they were, what they were, and their relationship to Judah, the Jewish people, they would forget that. Uh, but eventually it would come back to them. It would be brought back to them in the end times so they would become aware of it. Well, we don't know, but this could be what we are doing. Our world could be part of this, and they need to know it. They need to know it in order to survive. You need to know who you are to do what you have to do, because that is why you are put here on this earth. So uh, this is of interest. This is of importance. And uh, in the end times, in addition to the Messiah, son of David, who will definitely come, before he comes, before he comes, there is another principle that it may be understood from certain biblical prophecies, indications in the biblical text, also rabbinical traditions, that there will be another Messiah. There will be Messiah son of Joseph. A Messiah son of Joseph will be descended from Ephraim or possibly from Manasseh. Well, uh, most of the sources say Ephraim from the tribes of Joseph. The tribes of Joseph being now in the West, or concentrated in the West, their maidens and source being in the West, and they fulfill, have fulfilled the prophecies concerning the Ten Tribes, concerning Abraham will become a great and mighty nation, and whose seed would possess the gates of their enemies and all the major strategic areas on the earth, and that they would be exceedingly great, exceedingly multitudinous, a very, very great many of them as the sands of the sea, as the stars of heaven, as the dust of the earth, and extremely wealthy, relatively speaking, and also relatively speaking, they would do justice and judgment and be the battle axe of the Almighty, and begin to reform mankind, because the purpose of the exile, the purpose of the tribes, forgetting who they were, was that they should go down to the level of the Gentiles, to the level of the heathen, become heathen, become like them, descend to their level, and then evolve upwards and drag the rest of humanity with them. And that is what they have done to some degree. Uh, so that was their task and that is what they have done. And that is what we find as one of their proofs concerning them. And according to this there will be another prophet or another leader, future leader, a messiah. In Hebrew the word messiah 
Someone is anointed. Someone is holding oil. Uh, Bible says that the Messiah is going to be anointed. Someone is holding oil. Placed on his head. Placed on some part of him. Also, even objects can be anointed to be set aside for the holy purpose. That is the meaning of anointed. That is the meaning of Messiah or Messiah. Someone anointed or appointed or predestined for a certain role. And there will come a leader, the Messiah son of Joseph, before the Messiah son of David. And the Messiah son of Joseph will help the ten tribes know who they are, and you will initiate the, the uh, combination, the reunion, the coming together of Judah and the ten tribes. And a portion of them will return to the land of Israel. But before that happens, before that happens, the indications that certain disasters may overcome them. There may be a period of punishment or perdition. We don't know, really know what will happen. The biblical prophecy is indicated and will be conquered, perhaps, and oppressed by others. And then the Messiah, son of Joseph, will lead them, will come, arise, and teach them to overthrow their oppressors and they will defeat their enemies and take vengeance from them also take vengeance on the part on behalf of Judah for those who had oppressed them and they will conquer their oppressors and they will begin initiate the reunion with Joseph and a portion of them will return to the greater land of Israel that stretches from the Nile to the Euphrates and encompasses, encompasses a good portion of the Middle East and also eventually will stretch out and take in, His Holiness will stretch out and take in areas of Western Europe so that they too will be incorporated in the greater land of Israel. This has been prophesied. Now it has been prophesied that in the period of Mashiach, on the period of Mashiach, son of Joseph, Mashiach ben Yosef, also known as Messiah, Mashiach ben Ephraim, the son of Ephraim, descended from Ephraim, that he will be from the tribe of Ephraim and there are also indications that he will, that he will have an assistant someone will help him from the tribe of Dan so that is what we're talking about here new evidence has come to our uh, attention concerning this and uh, it began by uh, our interest was sparked by a, a query the queries that we received from Michal Clark of Denmark and then we found an article by Rabbi Baruch Eflati and so that is what we are about to, to, to discuss here that from the tribe of Dan will come someone, a person who, who in his own right will be a type of an assistant Messiah and he will help uh, the Messiah son of Joseph at first and also after that the Messiah son of David. Now how the, the, uh, the, uh, the comparisons amongst the commentators of the different tribes. So different tribes are described in different area parts of the Bible, especially in Genesis 49 and Deuteronomy 33. And in both places Judah is described as a cub of a lion, a young lion, and so too Dan. Uh, Genesis 49, uh, 9, it says Judah is a lion's cub, a lion's cub, a young lion. From the plain, my son, you have gone up. He crouches, he lies down as a lion, and there's a lion who dares to stir him up. That's concerning Judah. Remember, Judah represents the Jewish people. The Jewish people are comprised of the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and represented minorities from all of the other tribes. Together they are the Jewish people. And they also include converts to Judaism, as we will see, because biblically they are considered all considered part of Judah. And that is what concerns us, not uh, anything else. What the Bible says, that is what we take as a reality. So Judah is the Jewish people. Whoever the Jewish people are, that is what Judah is. And so Judah is compared to a lion's club, cub. Uh, this, a young lion. In Deuteronomy 33, 22, it says of Dan, he said, Dan, Dan is a lion's cub. Dan is also a lion's cub. He leaps out from Bashan. Bashan is the area of, of uh, southern Syria, approximately. Even northern Syria. Uh, all that region is considered part of Bashan. And Dan will leap out from there. 
And Rabbi Abraham ibn Ezra, 1089-1164, he says that these two tribes, Judah and Dan, both compared to a, a young lion, and they were picked out, and the emperor sourced this aspect of the lion concerning them because they produced the most prominent, the warriors were the most prowess amongst the tribes of Israel. And they're all over marching, therefore Judah went ahead at the beginning, and Dan went at the back. Dan uh, protected the rear of the, of the camp of the peoples of Israel when they marched out of the land of Egypt into the land of Canaan, whereas Judah was at the head because both of them were compared to, to a lion and both of them had similar tasks to fulfill. And the mother of Dan was Bilhah. Bilhah was the mother of both Dan and Naphtali. So, two of you all know, or should know, or if you don't know, we'll tell you <laughs> that Jacob. Jacob was the forefather of the Israelite nation. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were the patriarchs. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob was renamed Israel. Jacob was renamed Israel. And Jacob had four wives. Four wives. That's what you could do then, and that's what he had. He had four wives. And two of his wives were sisters. Leah and Rachel were sisters. They were his two major wives. And each, of the, each of the major wives had a handmaiden. The handmaiden of Leah was Zilpah, and the handmaiden of Rachel was Bilhah. They were the four wives of Jacob. And his two major wives, Leah and Rachel, had a kind of a, a kind of a contest, a kind of rivalry between them. And so uh, Leah got pregnant quite early and she had uh, several sons. In the end, she had six sons. And first didn't have any sons. She took a while getting pregnant. She didn't have any sons. And she saw that Leah, her sister, was uh, pushing them out, having uh, a lot of children in a short period of time, and, so, and she was worried. So she told her husband, Jacob, to take her maidservant, Bilhah, to have relations with her to get a child from her, from Bilhah. Because she understood that this was a virtuous thing to do, this is what the God wanted her to do. The Lord Almighty wanted this to happen, that Jacob should have a lot of children, should have at least 10, 12 children to bring forth tribes, to do what had to be done. So she gave her maidservant to Jacob, telling him to be, get a son from her. And he did. And he begat first Dan, and after that Naphtali, and later Rachel also gave birth to two sons, Joseph and Benjamin. So we read in Genesis 30, verse 3, beginning from verse 3, then she said, that is Rachel, Rachel, the uh, sister of Leah, Ra Rachel, the second main wife, she said to Jacob, hey, I'm reading from the translation uh, what that we are using, okay? I'm reading from the NASB, North American Standard Bible, uh, chapter 30, beginning from verse 3. Then she said, that is Rachel said to Jacob, here is my female slave Bilhah, have relations with her, that she may give birth on my knees, so that by her I too may obtain a child. So she gave him a slave, Bilhah, as a wife, and Jacob had relations with her. Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son. Then Rachel said, God has vindicated me. God has, bore, has uh, testified to, for me and has indeed heard my voice and has given me a son. Therefore she called him Dan. Dan in Hebrew means judgment. God has judged me and uh, found me worthy and has given me, and given me a son through my maidservant, Bilhah. She called him Dan, and Rachel's slave, Bilhah, conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. So Rachel said, with mighty wrestling, I wrestled with my sister, and I've indeed prevailed, and she named indeed Naphtali. Then again, Genesis 30, verse 22 onwards, Then God remembered Rachel, God listened to her, and opened her womb. 
she conceived and gave birth to a son and said, God has taken away my disgrace. She named him Joseph, saying, May the Lord give me another son. She named him Joseph. Therefore, we see according to this, according to the Bible is telling us, that indirectly, Joseph came into being through the birth of Dan, the son of Bila, the maid servant of Rachel, the mother of Joseph. And Rabbi Ephrati suggests that this is symbolic of the future reign of the Messiah, son of Joseph, that will come about with the help of Dan. And there's a Midrash, Con, uh, Midrash Brechet Rabbi concerning the future Messiah, son of David, not son of Joseph, the Messiah, son of David, that he will have a father from Judah and a mother from Dan. And the Messiah, son of David, it will be similar in some respects from Samson, the mighty judge, who is also from the tribe of Dan. The mother of Samson was from Judah, and the father was from Dan. The mother of uh, Samson was from Judah, and his father. The mother of Samson was from Judah, his father was from Dan. And Samson, in some ways, is a forerunner of the future Messiah, son of David. And so, Dan will help of the Messiah, son of Joseph, and after that, the Messiah, son of David, according to the sources. Dan will be of assistance to both of them, to both the Messiah, son of Joseph, and the Messiah, son of Dan. Uh, a book known as Call uh, a Tour, the voice of the turtle dove concerning the coming Messiah, by Rabbi Hillel Rivlin, 1757 1838, but only published, only published in 1980. He has a lot of uh, prophecies concerning the coming of the Messiah, concerning the Messianic age. And from one of them, he says that the Messiah, the son of Joseph, will be helped by a prince from Dan, from the tribe of Dan. Now this book is quite recent, and it, 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 whether it's genuine or not, uh, is a uh, controversy. It probably is. It may have had additions placed, inserted within it. Its authorship has been disputed, but on the whole, it is reliable. Nevertheless, we have other sources, much earlier sources, that say the same thing. And we have in this article that we are quoting from by Rabbi Baruch Efrati, he quotes from Rabbi Isaiah Halevi Horovitz, 1555 to 1630, that is around the time of Oliver Cromwell in England and, uh, the, the, and, the, and that era at any rate. And he was the author of Shnei Lukot of Brit, the Two Tablets of the Law. And he quotes from the Zohar, which was much earlier, so, uh, concerning the heroic deeds that Saria, someone called Saria, Son of Dan will be formed in the wars of the Messiah, son of Joseph. So we have this call of Torah, first of all, says that the Messiah, son of Joseph, will be helped by Prince of Dan. Then uh, Rabbi Isaiah, Rabbi Horovitz, named Luke of the Bread, in 1555-1630, he says that uh, Saria, the son of Dan, will help in, in the wars of Messiah, son of Joseph. He will help the Messiah, son of Joseph. And he quotes from the Zohar. Now the Zohar is a book, a sacred book, a mystical book. It is written in a mixture of Hebrew and Aramaic. It is uh, difficult to read until you get used to it. Also, a lot of it is concerned with mystical matters. It has a kind of code, a kind of uh, technical uh, terminology interspersed with those straightforward, simple meanings. And it refers to the Messiah, son of Ephraim. Now, uh, son of Ephraim, another term why Messiah, son of Joseph, is also known as Messiah, son of Ephraim in some sources. Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. The foremost son, the one who had the, the preeminence, at least in spiritual matters, is Ephraim. So sometimes the Messiah, son of Joseph, is referred to as the Messiah, son of Ephraim, as it is in the Zohar in this passage. And it speaks of someone called Saria. Saria will, will come to him, the Messiah, son of Ephraim. And he himself is from the tribe of Dan. Saria is from the tribe of Dan. He is destined to take vengeance and wars against the other nations who would have been at that time oppressing Israel. So this is the future. So here we have Dan helping. Dan being assistance to the Messiah, son of Ephraim, to the Messiah, son of Joseph in the end times. 
And uh, so Dan has an important role to play. And Dan will contribute to the forces of the name of the Messiah, son of Joseph, to express himself and save all of Israel. And indications are that in the end times, both the lost ten tribes and Judah will be oppressed by foreign forces, by heathen forces, by Edom and others. They will conquer or they will take control of the Israelite nations and will oppress them. And the Messiah, son of Joseph, will lead an independence movement to break free from the oppressors and to defeat the oppressors in war, to take vengeance on them for the oppression that they will have done to the ten tribes and also to Judah, uh, the, the, to the, uh, the oppression and the bad things that will have done to Judah. Messiah, son of Joseph, will take revenge on them for that. And also after that, he will initiate a reunification between the ten tribes and Judah, the Jewish people, and they will begin to come together. And a portion of the ten tribes under the Messiah, son of Joseph, will return to the land of Israel. The land of Israel, in the biblical terms, meaning the area from the Nile all the way up to the Euphrates, along the line of the Euphrates, that is, it will take in a portion of Egypt, the Sinai Peninsula, a portion of Saudi Arabia, all of the land of Israel, like so-called Palestine, all of Jordan, it will take in most of Syria, all of Syria, it will take in Lebanon, it will take in a portion of Turkey and a portion of Iraq and other nations. All of that will be the future land of Israel, also taking the Isle of Cyprus, all of that will be part of the future greater land of Israel and the Messiah, son of Joseph, will bring a, a portion of the ten tribes back there and reunite with Judah. It will initiate the reunification of the ten tribes with Judah. Later, Messiah, son of Joseph, may, according to some sources, he will be killed in war, or he may not. Depends how, you, how things turn out. And after him will appear the Messiah, son of David. The Messiah, son of David, will defeat, first defeat the enemies of Israel. He will complete the unification of the ten tribes with Judah. He will let every Israeli... Every Israelite know what tribe they pertain, they pertain to. They will know what tribes they pertain, pertain to. They will settle in tribal areas. In the land of greater land of Israel and also in the countries that they now live on, they will become part of the land of Israel. They will become part of the greater land of Israel. And the indications are from this passage that Dan, that Dan having at first assisted Messiah, son of Joseph, to, uh, to overthrow the enemies of Israel and to begin the redemption, he will also assist the Messiah, son of David, to reveal himself. And that will be the beginning of redemption. The Messiah, son of David, will rule over all of Israel and also he will eventually rule over all the earth. And in, that will be the Messianic age where that we may, some of us may well live to see. We don't know how these things will come about. We have to believe they will come about. And we also have to learn the Bible and to take to heart this message that is going out. May the Lord God of Israel bless you. Thank you.